Chris, thank you. It's been an incredible ride for Cincinnati team that has lost so much this season. But here they are, and they have Keith Williams in the starting lineup after his undisclosed injury knocked him out of the game yesterday. Houston starts with the ball, the second meeting between these teams this year, and we expect it to be quite a bit closer than 90 to 52 today. Dejon Giroux with six turnovers yesterday throws it right to Jeremiah Davenport, a Cincinnati takeaway. And the Bearcats starting five presented by Air Force Reserve. The big news, Williams is back. We still don't know the injury. John Brennan would not reveal that. But Keith Williams is playing with the freshman Saunders, the sophomores, Adams Woods, and Davenport, and the senior, Chris Vogt. Well, it's great to see Williams out there. We showed every angle we could where everything couldn't see much. But whatever the reason, he's back and good for him. But one to shoot, Mike Saunders gets it on the rim. And there's a foul underneath going against Cincinnati Houston starting five also presented by Air Force Reserve usual suspects for Houston third game in three days for both these teams Sasser Giroux Gorham all second team all conference players Dejan Giroux the defensive player of the year in the conference Justin Gorham the most improved player of the year in the conference Reggie Chaney starts at the five along with this man Quentin Grimes and you wanted to see Dan who would draw the Grimes assignment early and right now it is Keith Williams yeah Keith Williams really really active with his hands and that's perfect against Quentin Grimes you just cannot let him get comfortable Dejan Giroux unlocks the scoring, a three-pointer for the redshirt senior out of New Orleans. Well, that was missing yesterday, late in the game, second half. Nobody really, other than Grimes, stepped up. And in this game, if Giroux came, he's a triple-double waiting to happen. Somebody got to come to the ball here. And Vogue, double team, turns it over. That is a staple of Kelvin Sampson's defense, is double-teaming the big, that monster set. But a monster year for Kelvin Sampson, 23 and 3, ranked seventh in the country. Right now, they're a projected two or a three seed, depending on where you look. Joe Lenardi says they're a two with a win, and the Cougars have been the best team in the American from start to finish. You know, they've been the best team since Kelvin's been here. He 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 has taken this program back, meaning back in the day in the 80s, Phi Slam Jamma was the program in college basketball along with Georgetown and storied history Alvin Hayes going back farther than that a little bit dormant and what he has done along with his entire family I mean it's a family affair with Calvin and his son on the staff his daughter Lauren involved um, has been the best program in the country or excuse me best program in this league and the most nationally known over the last four seasons Zaga and Virginia are the only two programs with more wins than the University of Houston 106 and 23 but they do not have this trophy they have not won the American tournament championship again having lost to Cincinnati the last two tournaments Houston was a tri champion with Cincinnati and Tulsa before the cancellation of the conference tournament last year and a foul on Houston away from the ball as we look at John Brandon second year with Cincinnati 25 day COVID break after a three and seven start somehow Dan they came out of that nearly month-long shutdown playing better they are nine and three in the 12 game since well my coach of the year is Juwan Howard uh, and hard to say over Mark Few who's undefeated but Juwan Howard's my coach of the year but I gotta tell you this guy is in my top five he's had five players opt out couple came back really good players I mean not just guys real guys and vote is having a hard time right now they're giving him the ball in bad spots in this game the way Houston plays if you're gonna throw it to a big he can't be forced to make a decision you see a post right there and you got to make sure that boat doesn't have to go around through or over somebody like he did Gorham there Well two fouls two turnovers and boat takes a seat after barely over two minutes of play Grimes elevates for three and there's a foul going against Houston It'll be just Kevin Gorham after Marcus Sasser had a foul for Houston previously Kevin there's such a thing as a good whistle all right now here what does a good whistle mean doesn't mean a referee's calling fouls for one team or the other but a good whistle for Cincinnati was right there they called the push on an offensive rebound if referees are going to call physical play 
on Houston's offensive glass, that is a favorable whistle for Cincinnati. Right here, just take it and lay it in. Houston instead will beat Davenport, missed a three, rebound to Quentin Grimes. Our officials today, Tony Green, Don Daly, and Terry Oglesby. And KB Burdett is over on the sideline. We have him mic'd up today as the fourth official. He'll be giving us any explanations needed. Dustin Gorham for three. Justin Gorham, seven to nothing, Houston. What a start out of the game. Well, Gorham, a 40% three-point shooter, and what a luxury. You pick and pop with him. Called it two right now, so it is six nothing Houston in the long two. Davenport, he's going to have to hit those if Cincinnati wants to win today, and he strokes one. Well, the way he got it is the way Cincinnati's going to have to play. They've got to play in the middle of the floor. If you play side to side against Houston, they swallow you. But if you get it into the middle against their man to man, you can get them to overhelp and find a shooter like Davenport in the corner. A lot of assists in this tournament, 34 and 46 main field goals for Cincinnati. Gorham inside, no. Giroux with a follow, and that will fall. Acrobatic play from Dejan Giroux, who had a triple-double two nights ago. Adams-Woods with the answer. Micah Adams-Woods sticks a three. Big, big for Cincinnati. Micah Adams-Woods is the kind of guy who can go get 20. And it's good that you do it in an open floor. I think Cincinnati should let the ball pop, meaning don't come down slow, set it up against Houston's defense. Keep the ball moving, keep the ball popping, play inside out, and you'll get some looks. There's Marcus Sasser. Three guards, all all-conference in the starting lineup for Houston. And here's Gorham, who is an all-conference player, sticking a two with a chance for a hard-earned three. Well, that was just a straight turn to your left shoulder, jump hook. Wow, was that? You think about him. He hits a three, pick and pop, and then a jump hook inside. That's hard to guard. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by the Air Force Reserve. Start your adventure with the Air Force Reserve. To go, our game, and then the Big Ten Championship, Ohio State and Illinois. If you are a fan of a bubble team, you have your eyes on this game. We know Ohio State and Illinois are going. By the way, Grand Canyon, also to the NCAA tournament for the first time, this was a year ago. Our guy Bryce Drew, who was sitting next to me calling games, he would have been on the call for this game a year ago as our lead analyst on the American. Nice upgrade for Bryce from working with me in my big purple tie. I guess I knew something. I had purple on to taking Grand Canyon to the tournament for the first time. Congratulations to our good friend Bryce. Yeah, I thought, you know what, he, he I thought he got a raw deal at Vanderbilt. And good things happen to good people. Next thing you know, man, he's in the tournament. Scott's in the tournament. Is Homer coaching yep. anywhere? Get Homer in the tournament. <laughs> By the way, yesterday, 23 days, 23 years to the day of the shot from Bryce Drew at Valpo. He takes his team back to the tournament. So here's Keith Williams. And you Williams born then? makes the first free throw. Uh, yes, I was born there. You were? Uh, I was, yeah. 23? Yeah. I had to think about it for one second, but the I answer know. is a yes. I, mean, I saw that picture right there, and I was like, man, he started broadcasting when he was like eight. <laughs> that was a year ago. Quentin Grimes with a foul, his first. Williams one for two. Uh, it's hard to, to, to ask you this, Dan. What do you expect from Williams? Because we don't know what the injury was still, but how has he looked to you in the first few minutes? I think he looks terrific. In fact, I thought on the defensive end, he was all over Grimes early and very, very active with his hands. I don't want to leave out Dana Drew either, who was a fantastic basketball player at Toledo. One of the great basketball families in the country. Williams for three, and tipped around, grabbed by Reggie Cheney, who checked back in after a brief spell for Bryson Gresham. Row inside to Gorham, who's got an early five points. Gorham's got an early seven now. He had the last six yesterday for Houston, and he started strong. Yeah, here's a problem. Uh, Eason was just kind of playing in his own. He wasn't competing in his own, and Gorham just came over the top of him and posted him up without much resistance. 
Davenport all the way across. Saunders misses a three. Cincinnati not shooting it terribly well to start. And this is going back to Houston. What? Watch Gorham here. He just steps in. I mean, you got two feet in the lane. Now, the pass wasn't great. It took him out of the lane. But he's able to go wherever he wants to go. Look, man-to-man -man or zone, you've got to play with a man in your area like it's man-to-man. -man. Push him out. Don't let him set up. Uh, last possession, Kevin. Saunders was open for a reason in the right corner. They were really helping off of him onto the post. They're not mad about it at all if Saunders shoots jump shots. Cincinnati, Cincinnati or, excuse me, Houston is it. Is two for six. That's even with Gorham, who's got an early seven. Chris, you have more on Justin Gorham's story? Yeah, he loves this game because his dad, Jerry, got him started in it at four years old. His dad passed away from cancer in 2016. And Gorham told me he thinks about him every day every time he's on the court before during after because his biggest disappointment is the fact that his dad never got to see him play in college he knows he would love to watch him out here on the court so it's been an inspiration for him to continue playing the game he loved he has played chris in an inspiring fashion all year as madsen hits a two i think about what kelvin sampson said earlier in the year rebounding is heart and nobody's heart is bigger than justin Gorham's. Over well, the pass there, he sets up Grimes, and Grimes sticks a three. It's 16 to nine, Houston in the first seven minutes. This is an over evaluation, but Grimes reminds me of Clay Thompson. A little bit thicker, I get it. Maybe not as tall, but man, when he shoots it, you just know it's going in. He shoots it from deep, and he gets it off quick. Same thing there in the zone. They just let him be go free, and you can't do that. You have to play him in your area, man to man. Hit the most threes in the conference this year. Five last night and a two-point win over Memphis. Davenport stuck. Two to shoot. Williams from nearly half court and a shot clock violation. All right, same thing I was talking about with Gorham on the post. Applies to the zone when Grimes is in your area. Okay, here's Grimes. You're kind of out there. All right, Williams is spinning around. Doesn't get to him. Look, that ball goes to somebody else, and you're on the same side as Grimes. You've got to play defense on Grimes. He's the guy. Houston, five assists on six meet field goals to start. They bring Tremont Mark into the game, freshman. There's Grimes on the other side. That's in and out. Grabbed by David DeJulius, who comes off the bench for the first time. Julius. Feeding Eason. Nice find. Tari Eason, a freshman with his first bucket. That worked because Madsen's in the game and not Saunders. Madsen was in the left corner. His man stayed with him, which opened up the middle for the layup by Eason. If Saunders was in, the help would have been there. Sasser sticks a three. Marcus Sasser just two for ten from deep yesterday, and he's one for two tonight. He's another guy. When he shoots it, you just think it's in. David Poor. Eason fighting hard. He'll be called for his second foul. Both big men with two. Eason and Vote trying to muscle with Justin Gorham. Well, you can't let him set up. Gorham's pretty good today, right? So you got to understand that and fight him harder than you normally would. Charlie Cream, who is the Joe Lenardi of the women's side, a resident bracketologist. Stanford, UConn, A&M, South Carolina on the one line. A couple of SEC teams there and Baylor, which is going to be a one seed in today's men's tournament, projected for a two seed in the women's game. <laughs> And Houston's going to call a timeout on the inbound. Well, there's our Emmy submission for the day, folks. We're back in 30 seconds to Fort Worth. You're teaching, and you're seeing him talking to Reggie Chaney about squaring his shoulders and getting back off into the lane so that he can guard the driver. When you don't square your shoulders, you give an angle to the basket, and that's a big deal with Calvin Sampson and most teams, really. Bigs have to play with square shoulders in the middle of the lane. I'll tell you this, Calvin Sampson's a really right good now. teacher. He's a really yeah. good teacher. Like, he doesn't let anything 
you know, he doesn't let anything go. He's going to teach it in game. He's going to teach you after the game. He's never going to be satisfied. You got to be able to accept coaching to play for him. Mark fighting for the offensive rebound off the Sasser miss. Mason Madsen cleans it up. Here comes Cincinnati into Julius. David to Julius fouled before the drive. I want to go back to that. What makes Kelvin Sampson a good teacher? Well, he, he when you saw what he did there, he took the player, Cheney, individually, looked him in the eye, and showed him with his, not only his hands, but his movement, exactly what he wanted. And, you know, the guy's been doing this for 100 years. So if you're smart, you nod your head, and you listen, and you correct what it is he's telling you. But he is very good at communicating with players in Whatever language they understand some kids you gotta you know you got to get after some kids you gotta be nice to I mean it's, he, He's very good at that figuring out each individual player That's a foul on Quentin Grimes as Mason Madsen cut. That's a second foul on Grimes And he will check out at the 1040 mark of this first half Here's what you need to do with this Kevin yeah, everybody thinks well, it's gonna help your defense. Of course, it's gonna help your defense But you got to have good offensive possessions with Grimes out there This is an opportunity to keep not only stay in this game, but get a lead by halftime But you got to grind out really good shots every possession Time stamp this moment Cincinnati down eight looking for a spark Grimes out of the game with two fouls Madsen sticks it under your own. Madsen couldn't finish with the off oh. and Eason there. That's a goal 10 against Fabian White and count the bucket for Tari Eason. Madsen was smart. He hit a shot earlier, so he knew the help was coming fast, really fast. So he used that, drove past, drew a, a defender at the rim, and it opened the backboard for Eason. One of Houston's strengths is guarding their own man, so it doesn't open up the defensive backboard. Oh. White out to Mark. Mark misses a three. Good box out by Davenport. He's been great on the glass in this tournament. Darius is still in the game with two fouls. Both he and Vote have two for Cincinnati. Somebody's going to have to play. This is a thin roster with nine scholarship players, only eight of whom have played the tournament. That's a misses. Rebound to Fabian White. Houston has missed its last four shots. Seven for 15 to start. Cincinnati just five out of 14 against one of the top defenses in the country. White on the drive, and White throws it home over Davenport. Boy, White just took off. When he got the ball, he was so ready to go, and he knew he was going to get into the lane, and the jump that he made was fantastic. Only played in six games all year, but wow. Toward ACL his right knee in May, he was not expected to be back at all this season. He came back very quickly. The Julius flings it up to the rim, and Gresham rips it away from Eason. One of the best rebounding teams in the country. Houston is plus four on the glass early. You, you take those shots, you're going to get beat by 20. Grimes or no Grimes. Mark Gresham. Late as 10. You you do, you watch a game and you say, all right, whatever the lead is, who's getting better shots? Sometimes you're down 10, but you're getting better shots. Houston not only playing hard or playing smarter, but getting better shots. Timeout Cincinnati. It's a big lead early for Fabian White and Houston trying to finally win a conference tournament championship. Off. There's no rim protection really per se in there So you feel comfortable going to the rim and then Gresham, you know kind of the stare and stun defense Well, he knocked it out. Bigs are ready to play for Calvin Sampson today. Really ready to play What can Cincinnati do on this side? Uh, make an extra pass Whip the ball around spread the defense and then drive the ball right and play in the middle at the end of it Which Williams did he played in the middle, but it was too much dribbling Just on the same side you got to whip it around and make the defense make a mistake Chris Boat is back in since he's still in that zone look 
Mark and DeVoe. Offensive rebound, White. Giroux will hold on with a fresh 20. Jamal Shedd, freshman into the game. And an offensive foul is called. There was a clear out. Looked like it was Bryson Gresham who's called for his first. Houston is in. They are the last two seed in Joe Lenardi's projected bracket. Look, we have seen in previous election Sundays that if you play in one of these games, generally where you are going into the day seems to be where you end up. We've seen American and Big Ten winners that barely get any movement, if at all. So Houston, their fate is sealed on the two or three lines somewhere, we think. Wichita State is the first team out. Memphis seems like they're done unless there's a committee miracle. And then Cincinnati has to win to claim the bid. There's a review right now. So if you're a Wichita State fan at home watching, you don't feel good right now because, look, Joey Brackett's when they're going to call it a common foul, which is a good call. It's just guys playing. Bryce and Gresham involved in one of those plays last night where DeAndre Williams of Memphis fouled out, then unfouled out, then he refouled out a couple of minutes later as Houston won that game by two. So let's see if they whip the ball around. Let's see if they whip the ball around here a little bit. Go side to side. This is a little set for Mads. You like the shot, even though he didn't hit it? Uh, yeah, I don't mind him shooting because I think he's really confident. I just think that's a tough shot. That's a play you kind of run at the end of the clock. Mm. They tried to run it yesterday, and Easton kept messing it up, popping back, but they got it. That's Jerome. Cincinnati's going to sit back and let Houston shoot threes. It may not be their day. Cougars are four for eight from deep. Well, yesterday I thought since or I thought Houston did not handle the press very well. You're going to have to think about if you're John Brandon about picking this up full court and trying to stir it up or at least make Houston uncomfortable because Houston is really comfortable on both ends right now. Both Saunders went crashing into each other, so Houston got the defensive rebound off the Williams miss. Jerome seeing a field of vision very well. He's got three assists to go with eight points. This is Mark, and there was a whistle before that shot, and Houston turns it over. You want to see comfortable? Watch Jerome. He just standing there with his hands above his elbows. Nobody's there. Just draws into his shot, and that is a formula for getting whooped. You mentioned it. It was a 55 to 11 run last time they played. Second only, Kevin, to the 40 to zip run. Oh, you put who's in the tournament, by the way, Jeff Bowles. Bowles, great dude. Put on Dennis Gage, great dudes. Cleveland State team. Both go to the tournament, Ohio and yeah. State this year, champions of the MAC and the Horizon, respectively. Mamadou Diari is in the game now for Cincinnati, and he gets fouled. So first time in this three-game and three-day scenario for Cincinnati that Diara comes off the bench. Well, that's even more reason to press. You know, you've got a guy that just put Diara back, say, hey, look, block everything. You just have to make the team in white Houston uncomfortable. They are way too comfortable. Diara, two for four at the free throw line this year. There he is in the American Championship game, and he hits the first. He's one of the players that opted out and then opted back in this year. Mamadou DR played in the first three games, opted out for the next four, then returned. David DeJulius opted out late in the year, opted back in for this tournament. Three other Cincinnati players opted out for good. Rappel Simonowskis, who they expected to be a, a big player to post from Colgate. Gabe Max and Zach Harvey as well. Williams the offensive rebound, and it'll be Cincinnati ball off of Fabian White. Well, Diara looked pretty good right there. What a lift it would be if he could at least just give him some rim protection. Again, comfort. Comfort isn't always shooting. Comfort is knowing you can drive it to the basket and no one's going to be there to, one, take a charge, two, block the shot. And if Diara can give him a little bit of that, that would change things a little bit for Cincinnati. They like to put Diara at the top defensively in a 1-3-1 one, one zone. I wonder if we'll see that with him in the game. We're going to find out if Saunders misses a three and Sasser pushes for Houston. Yeah, that's a bad shot. Uh, you can get that. They're letting Saunders shoot it. Yeah. 
Sasser. White going to work on Williams again. He finds Gorham. Gorham's got nine early on. Boy, was that good by Gorham. He went under the bucket. I was going to tell you, Diara played pretty good defense there to start the possession. And at the end, he just lost Gorham, who made a terrific move. Uh-oh. Yeah, you say no, oh, because you were thinking charge. Maybe it yeah. was almost one of them. And then Diara is fouled getting his own rebound as Gorham hit the deck. Make yourself available. All right, watch Gorham underneath the rim. He's just sneaky. He's just, he's kind of sneaking around because he sees Diara's head is focused squarely on the ball. From an offensive standpoint, that's great. From a defensive standpoint, you got to have what's called your head on a swivel. You got to have your head back and forth, seeing what's in front of you and what's behind you. Tariq is going to come back in. Maybe, maybe he'll come in for Diara later. Gorham's got nine. He, he said before this tournament started, he reset the stakes for Houston. Said, look, it's not about getting into the tournament anymore for this team. We are looking forward to the Final Four. We're looking to a national championship. The stakes have changed. The level has risen at the University of Houston the last few years. Remember three years ago, there were six seed lost on that Jordan Poole buzzer beater to Michigan in the round of 32. The year after that, maybe Sweet 16. Tyler Hero hit a late three. They lost to Kentucky. And the expectations are for this program, for the folks inside the program now, Dan, that they think they can be Final Four good. What do you think? I think they're Final Four good. Uh, but I think there's a lot of teams Final Four good. You know, I think the three top teams, and we're going to see what happens with Michigan now that Livers is out, but obviously Baylor, who struggled, and... Um, Gonzaga, who I think is the best team in the country, obviously has been all year. But I do, I think this team was Calvin Sampson and, and how hard they play and Grimes shooting the basketball and Sasser. No question, they're they're good enough to get there. And it, wouldn't that be interesting, Calvin Sampson back in Indiana? Mm -hmm. Looks like they've got it at 1-3-1. One, one. DR is up top and Sasser just worked him. Rock of his sleep with a three. To Julius. Offensive rebound, Williams, Spinorama, Williams scores. First make in the last 10 field goal attempts for Cincinnati. Well, that was really good by Williams. Again, I, I said this when Grimes went out. You, you got to get good shots. You just do. And they have it. I, I know they like to pay Diara up here on top. And that's, that's a good, you know, that's great. But in this particular game, you saw it right there. Every time there's a drive by Houston, they are incredibly comfortable going to the rim. Good play by Diara. Get to the line. To Julius. And to Julius nearly ran himself out of bounds. He will get it to Eason with 10 to shoot. Eason batted into the air by White and a foul against Cincinnati. There is nothing at all doing for Cincinnati on this end. No, and this is when this is why Houston is Final Four good. Grimes goes out. Okay, that's your best score. That's Player of the Year. There's been no drop off in effort. There's been an enhanced sense defensively by five guys in white, and the lead has been taken out with the best player in the league out of the game. That's why one of the reasons why Houston can make a very deep run or as deep as you want national champion good. Okay, Giroux hits the front end of the one and one. It's 34-17. That's a problem. Also a problem. That foul was Tari Eason's third. John Brandon feeling like he had to play Eason because Vote has two. Vote has not worked in this game, but Eason is now done for the rest of the half with three. And Giroux goes two for two. I mean, I, I don't know. You you tell me because you were the college basketball coach. What can John Brandon do right? Now? Well. I go back right here. You, you just a little patience, whip the ball around. And that, all right, you hit that shot, but at least you got a good shooter shooting it. You know, we've seen Saunders shoot it. We've seen DeJulius shoot it. I mean, both are very valuable players, but they're not jump shooters. It's okay. You get the right guy shooting the basketball, you got a shot to get back in this. He's you got to protect this rim. Shooter on the team. Yep. Yeah, you got you to protect the bucket. 
Sasser, Sasser crossing to Julius. Oh, he's so smooth, Marcus Sasser. He's feeling it too. I mean, he is absolutely has a look about him like it's going to be very difficult to keep him out of the lane. Williams, no. Here's Jerome. Houston was electric in transition when these teams met three weeks ago. And they're doing it again today as Sasser's three is into a mess of players and picked out by the Julius. Davenport, that might have been a double dribble. Clear out for DeJulius against the defensive player of the year in Jerome. Diara hey. Bob and Davenport with a catch. Yeah, Diara's giving him great minutes. I mean, hey, look, it's not working for Easton. It's not working for Vogue. Diara has played really well. That was a fantastic pass. He's gotten to the foul line. I'm not worried about the inside with Diara. Just stay in there and block a shot. to 11 when Quentin Grimes went out with two fouls. It is 18-11 sets. Jerome, Gora battling. Jerome swoops in to get his own miss and then resets to Sasser. Sasser down the lane. Jerome in the corner and the rebound grab by Williams. Reverse it, drive it. Keep reversing it. Keep driving it. Nice on-ball defense from the true freshman Shed, one of the best true freshman defenders Calvin Sampson has ever had. And he ties up Williams here. Great play by Shed. It will be Cincinnati possession, but Houston is up big. Marcus Sasser is a good offensive player. And remember, tournament play comes down to what? Comes down to making shots. He can make a bunch. ESPN's exclusive presentation of college basketball is brought to you by SoFi. Get your money right. To keep them from being the physical dominant team. Great start so far for the Cougs, Kev. It is indeed, Kev. They are looking like a team that's going to punch a ticket today and join from the state of New York. Matt Langles, Colgate Raiders. Also, St. Bonaventure with an impressive win over VCU. And then Alabama beating LSU in the SEC Championship. Uh, Dan, your impressions so far from Sunday of Champ Week? Uh, Alabama and LSU was a great game. Nobody in the country is playing better than Illinois. I would assume will back from an injury has been fantastic, and Andre Cabello has been as good as any guard in the Big Ten. Uh, Colgate, did you know this, Kevin? Colgate is eighth going into the day in the net rankings. I did know. Eight. They just take no prisoners in the Pat League up in Hamilton, New York. Micah Adams Woods miss a free throw. Offensive rebound, Madison. And this is Davenport for three, and that's his third. Told you at the timeout, need to get Madison in there because he, he hoped he could make two or three threes maybe at some point in this game, get this thing close. But that was terrific by Madison running it down, finding Davenport. No, but Sampson's got four guards here. Cameron Tyson off the bench for the first time as Mark breaks it. Maybe a chance for Cincinnati to get within striking range. But that was Diara. The, the drive came in. Diara just showed. And next thing you know, no lay. That's a good pass. Adams Woods got a foul by Shed. I think it was before the second shot. And so I think this will be a shooting foul going up for two. It will for Micah Adams Woods. I love Adams was I like this Cincinnati team. They're gonna be terrific uh, a year from now Madsen made a nice play there did not force a shot just made the extra pass and that is exactly what you have to do against Houston Kevin It's called speed jump Houston will speed jump and when you and that's the goal of every defense to get the offense uncomfortable Extra pass defeats that it's a kid who's been very comfortable this year, Adams Woods, too. He's handled everything well. John Brannon told us this week, you come to one practice, you might notice Micah Adams Woods. You come to 10, and you'll notice him more than anybody. It's not like it's right. Syracuse, New York. I love this pickup here. This same thing Memphis did, a little face guard. Mark. There you oh, go. Mark throws it away, and oh. Diara came barreling in. 
And then Sasser came barreling back toward him. Sasser made a good play. Foul is called against DR. Yeah, Sasser made a good play coming back to the basketball so many times. It's the last three feet that dictate who gets the ball. So you've got to come to it. DR with some great hustle and obviously some sportsmanship. DR's made a difference. Well, seven nothing run with him in the game. Again, Easton three fouls. Vote has two, one and one. And Sasser, 87 percent, hits the first. You know, John, John Brand has got to look at it like this. What's the difference if we lose by 20 or 30 or two? He's got to figure out. And, and the press looked pretty good. So maybe, maybe this second half between Madsen and the press, you can get something going. Davenport. I mean, the game's being certainly played at Houston's pace, wouldn't you say? Yeah, it is. And, and at Houston's physicality, I thought right there on the drive, Davenport got bumped pretty good. A lot of places that'd be a foul, but they're letting him play, which is not bad for Houston. And you pointed that out earlier. There was a whistle that went in Cincinnati's favor, but this yeah. was more of a let him play scenario here. Yeah, it has been. Gorham, Mark, Sasser, tough catch, got Madsen in the air, Sasser drives the lane, Marcus Sasser as cool as can be, he's got a dozen. Cincinnati can take the final shot, Madsen, no, and Shed's going to hang out of the basketball with a 14-point lead. Last night, Houston went into the half up 41-29 on Memphis Two points better today, 41-27 at the break, and the guards have done the work for Kelvin Sampson's Cougars. Well, one of the guards is in Grimes, and the offense was not good for Houston, or excuse me, for Cincinnati when Grimes went out. It doesn't matter who's in the paint or who's around you, he's that good. These teams played three weeks ago. Houston won by 38 in that game. They lead by 14. Cincinnati only one win trailing at the half this season. Chris Button, what did Kelvin Sampson have to say when you caught up at halftime? Unselfish is how he described his team. He loved the way they moved the ball around in the first half, pointed to the 13 assists. He said that's what's allowed for our offensive success this entire tournament in Fort Worth. These guys are unselfish. They don't care who scores. That's what he loves about his team right now. Chris Dejan Giroux, his, his leader, I was going to say, Dan, six turnovers yesterday, five assists, one turnover in the first half to set the pace today. Yeah, Jarrell will turn it over, but he's one of those guys that everybody likes playing with. He doesn't over dribble it, he doesn't overshoot it, and he gets it to you when you're open. Grimes back in the game with two fouls for Houston. Chris Vote in the game with his two fouls. Starting five on the floor for both teams. Mikey Saunders. And Saunders slams it in. His first basket. Good way to start the half. Great way to start the half. He doesn't need to shoot jump shots. Catch it on the wing, and he's the quickest guy out here. Go to the rim. I like this. Ice Mike, what do you like about this? I like the full court pickup. I, I think anything you can do, whether it's trap at half court, full court pickup, whatever, to make Houston uncomfortable. The row wrap around to Grimes had just three in ten minutes in that first half. Reggie Cheney into vote. Cheney trying to draw the foul instead. Vote kept his feet on the ground, blocked the shot. Saunders, his shot is blocked, Ooh, and that's head. off of Saunders. That's just bad luck. Come on, Saunders going 110 miles an hour. Really smart. That's what you want to do. How good is this defense? So two guys right there. Cheney gets it, and boom, right off his head. That's bad luck. Only four turnovers in the game for Houston, which struggled mightily with the Memphis pressure yesterday. Turned it over 15 times in their two-point win. Jerome. Jerome. Short. Rebound Saunders. Woods. So three pointers, Dan. Four for 15 in the game, Cincinnati. What kind of threes 
do you want them to take as Grimes that takes and makes for Houston? <laughs> that kind right there. <laughs> um, you got to have the right guy. Davenport's the guy who's going right now. You know, you, you, you had a little momentum there. And then all of a sudden you jack up a three if you're Cincinnati and they're not going. No, I, I know people are going to say, well, if they were going, you wouldn't say that. Well, of course not. But you got to have a feel for the game. Bill Belichick always talks about it. every game is organic. Okay, there's Saunders. Injury timeout. Mike Saunders on the ground out of the game for Cincinnati. And Saunders is going to go to the locker room. I mean, this doesn't look like it's the head after he got hit with a block shot ball. That didn't look like the injury. A couple of possessions later, he is being helped into the locker room by the Cincinnati training staff. Chris, what'd you see? Yeah, it came off the court and then just really fell down. The trainers were looking at the right hip thigh area. He was able, as you guys saw, to walk off on his own power, but almost just like collapsed when he got to the sidelines. Thank you, Chris. And he had an ankle injury that caused him to miss the game Sunday at East Carolina as well. This is a little bit of a banged up Cincinnati team. I know everybody's banged up this time of year, but only nine available scholarship players, and a couple of them are playing hurt in a big way. Sasser, rock and roll. Marcus Sasser with 16. Whoever plays Houston in the NCAA tournament, listen close. Deny Sasser the ball. Under no circumstances do you get him or allow him to be comfortable. And for the love of all things holy, keep him out of the lane. He gets in the lane. It's death, Kevin. Oh. All right, so this was a moment ago. Saunders, before he goes off, he gives the ball up, and then he just heads right to the sideline. And there he goes. Again, missed a game last week with the ankle injury. We don't know what it is here, but he has been playing a little banged up as Cincinnati turns it back over. And this is, looks like he pulled a hand. I mean, he I looked at his right hand. It looked like it was initially on the back of his hamstring, but that's a tough kid. I, for him to go out of a game, there is something seriously wrong with some part of his body because he is all in on this game. Gorham, no. Offensive rebound. Grimes. Yes. Grimes, a second chance bucket. Clay Thompson is the only thing I can tell you. He lifts up perfectly. Body posture. Everything just lifts straight up with a perfect stroke. 1.4 points per possession right now for Houston. That's ridiculous efficiency. I think they're going to add to that number. Grimes stuck. It's a 21 point advantage in the American Championship game. Timeout Cincinnati. be able to bring you college basketball this season you and I Dan have the easiest jobs in the world people ask us oh what's it like calling a game from home is it hard look at what these folks have to do traveling across the country in a pandemic earlier shoots staggered times the amount of time you can spend in arenas and in certain places is cut down this year wearing masks socially distancing our tech team Getting us on the air as you and I call this game from New York and Indy. Um, we could never, ever thank all the people who have made this season possible. And that's without even mentioning our college basketball leadership and scheduling team. I swear, all of you out there in scheduling leadership, please, please go take the next six months and go on vacation somewhere for getting us through this 5,000 piece jigsaw puzzle of the season. You all have done an extraordinary job. And on behalf of all of us here at ESPN, for us to make it to the finish line has been just a seismic accomplishment. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, you're not kidding.
That was really well said. I don't even want to add to it because I'll screw it up. But, man, you are not kidding. The leadership, the people behind the scenes, how much work guys put in, it's, it, gals put in, everybody. It's, it's unbelievable that we – I told one of our tech guys who was helping me with my house, I go, how would you guys get so smart? Like, <laughs> you guys, like, how did you figure out to do this? Like, nobody's ever done this before, right? And all of a sudden, he has pins guys come up with – well, we're going to do it at home, and we're going to do it this. It's unbelievable, and thank you all so much. Lead is 20 for Houston. We'll go back to break here in the American Tournament Championship. Sign up at ESPN.tv. The whole gang uh, are going to break down the field of 68 with some very special guests. Sports Center follows this game. Right here on ESPN, Reese Davis and company will analyze the NCAA men's field of 68. This is Joel Lenardi's record in recent years. So if you're a Wichita State fan, if you are a Colorado State fan, you're hoping that Joel missed one or two this year because Joe just submitted his final bracket. He has Wichita State, the first team out of the field. That changed overnight after Oregon State won the Pac-12 championship. It changed with Georgetown storming through the Big East championship. And again, if Cincinnati could pull off something miraculous here, uh, Joe says they would knock Utah State out. They're the final team in. Drake, Louisville, and Syracuse above them. It's going to be interesting, Dan. I'm curious how the committee evaluates teams this year. As you look at the Saturday bid stealers, Georgetown and Oregon State, with limited non-conference play, with limited numbers of games, I'm not really sure what we're in for tonight. Yeah, I'm not either. I, I, I would have a tendency to be more personal this year as opposed to analytical um, this year. I would have I would have a hard time, and I know this is probably just me, but 25 and 4 Drake, I'd have a hard time keeping them out. I, I just would. I, and it, look, I get it, but it, those of you that say, well, you know, it's it should be all analytics, then why have people in a room? I mean, just put it in a computer in Vegas or put it in a computer in Bristol or put it in a computer in Indianapolis uh, and go for there. I personally, if I were in the room, I'd have a hard time keeping a team like Drake out. I would have a hard time uh, putting a team like Duke in, you know, and Duke, and, and Duke, Kansas, Virginia, and I'm probably missing one. Duke has said apparently they backtracked if they do get invited they're going to go so that's correct uh, you know I, I, I wouldn't put them in but you would have to evaluate them pre Jalen Johnson post Jalen Johnson if you wanted to I would think it's interesting I, I, I think this should be a more personal look and we'll really 25 and 4 to me Drake should be in the tournament this year maybe not every year based on analytics but they should be well, Duke, we think he's going to miss it uh, for the first time since 95, yeah. we think. Kentucky's certainly going to miss it in 76 since they both were. I'm with you on Drake and the interesting cases in his conference. Wichita State won the American regular season as Davenport is fouled by Gore. That'll be Gorham's second foul. Wichita State wins the American Conference regular season. They're 11 2. They win by winning percentage over Houston. They had one quote unquote bad loss. It was yesterday a quadrant three loss to Cincinnati. They're four and four in the top two quads. They plummeted eight spots this morning in the net. They're now 72 in the net, Wichita State. And of the other bubble well, teams, as that's knocked out of bounds, Michigan State 70, and then nobody else is really around them. So if the net is going to be a major evaluator this year, again, we don't know if it is, that would not bode well for Wichita State. Well, in talking to a number of people, Greg Shaheen, who ran the tournament for years, Joe Lenardi, Kevin Pauga, who has a KPI index, nobody knows exactly what the number is on the net. Like, what's the bad number? You know, we're, we're, because there's not enough depth. Um, Chiefs. Grimes a step back three, and Houston is just pouring it on now. No, nobody, like, you know, the RPI, if you're over, like, 45, whatever it used to be, you had enough data that said, okay, you're not getting to the tournament. The net doesn't have that yet because we haven't even been using it that long. But I'll tell you this. I would personally, for me, I, you're going to see Grimes here doing what he, Clay Thompson, and other great shooters do, just simply lift up and make. But I would have a hard time, and again, I'm going to be wrong about this, um... I would have a hard time putting Utah State in and not the champ here 
in the AAC, Wichita State. I would have a very difficult time with that. Greg Shaheen, who ran the tournament, said Duke can trust their first instinct this year, which is they ain't going to the tournament. <laughs> well, we know Houston's getting in. Joe Lenardi says they're going to be a two seed, and Quentin Grimes will be a major factor when they get there. He and Marcus Sasser have combined for 32 in this game. What a journey it's been for Quentin Grimes, who is the conference co-player of the year. Chris Button, you have more on Quentin's story? Yeah, in today's uh, age of one and done, he's starting to defy that. You know, he went to Kansas his first year. He thought that he would be that kind of player. He tested the NBA waters after his freshman year. He decided what was best for him was to come back home to Houston to play under Kelvin Sampson, where they allow the guards to develop and have some freedom. He says his message to younger guys, it's okay to not be that one and done guy. It's okay to take time to develop. Just look at how my journey has turned out. Eight points averaging this freshman year, now 17 points a game. Yeah, you know, everybody has their own journey. And, and I disagree, as Mark drills one, I disagree with the whole idea that you got to be one and done or you're not very good. I mean, I, I, to me... If I'm an NBA team and I see the way the modern NBA is played with jump shooting from deep, are you kidding me? Quentin Grimes made the greatest decision of his life to stay <laughs> and going to play for Calvin where now he defends, he rebounds. Not to say he wouldn't have done that with Bill Self. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying he has done that with Calvin. Back-to-back -back baskets for Mark. The Julius just hit a three and he'll try his luck again. Rebound to Cheney. Lead is 24 for the Houston Cougars. Lead is 26. Grimes to White. It's a party in Houston. Are we at the Dockage family? My nephews and nieces, Pop Mitzvah, Bar Mitzvah stage yet? There, Dan. Telling Bar Mitzvah stories of the Dockage family? We are within range for the BML, the Bar Mitzvah line. Timeout, Cincinnati. Take it to break, yeah. Mr. Botmitzma. Well, I'll tell you this. Kevin Sampson, whoever's in the court is going to play. Whoever's on the court is going to play hard. And here we're just running past everybody and delivering dimes. Dimes. More dimes. So suing Wayne Washington. Those are going to be the guys who are going to keep you in this basketball game. Back down to a four-point game, Kevin Dan. Good one of the Big Ten guys. Those two teams will be on the top couple of seed lines. We know that. Illinois trying to finish what has been an extraordinary closing run to the season. They'll be a one seed along with Baylor and Michigan and Gonzaga. We can guarantee that. We don't know a lot, Dan, but we know that. Deal. How about this? Mamadou Diara yeah. walk on Rob Banks in the game as well for Cincinnati. And Diara buries a three. You know, John Brandon made a shift change. He put in five new guys, or maybe only four, but he had had enough of no effort. He felt like his team had kind of died here by the effort of Houston, and good for DR. He's played really well in this game. Well, this is a full five. Mark goes to work on the walk-on bank, spins it out, rebound DR. Saunders back in the game. Nice to see Mike Saunders, who left near the end of the first half. Shoot it again, big dude. What do you think? Diara, he wants it. He's not going to take it. Adams Woods bobs away. Diara flying in, and he was out of bounds. Tonight, ESPN, the ESPN app, more basketball, professional basketball. Our first game of the second half, the Clippers and the Pelicans, Kawhi and Zion. Another phenomenal seasons, both 9 Eastern, 8 Central, NBA Sunday, presented by State Farm on ESPN. It is 64-41 for Houston, trying to win its first tournament championship since 2010, when Tom Pender's squad won four games in four days to snatch the Conference USA title out of thin air. The Feed the hot hand, Mamadou Diara back-to-back -back threes. It is astounding how it happens in basketball where the guy that comes in a game, plays hard, doesn't do anything but what he's supposed to do, and that's what Diara did in the first half. He came in and I thought played really well. Gave him a nice lift. Didn't really help to score a whole lot, but it settled things down. 
but it's amazing, Kevin, how when you just do that, you get the extras in basketball. You just do. It, it's, a, it's a fascinating study, and I always say basketball is a living, living breathing organism that absolutely knows who gets to be rewarded. Oh. That guy gets to be rewarded with a ridiculous <laughs> bank shot. Quentin Grimes, go ahead and smile. 18 for the co-player of the year. Saunders will go. Grimes chasing it down hard. Out of bounds to Houston. How about this bank shot? I'll give it to him. His dad Marshall said that they worked on that, I suppose, but I don't think he meant to bank that. I'm looking at his face. He didn't mean to bank that. Did you think he meant to bank that? No. He's good. <laughs> He's not that good. Grimes with 21 yesterday. 18 tonight. Houston survived a back and forth tussle with Memphis last night. They are comfortably ahead here, nine minutes and change away from a conference tournament championship. Melvin Sampson hasn't won one of these in a long, long time. Grimes with the intercept, his second steal. How long has it been since Kelvin Sampson won a tournament championship? 2003 with Oklahoma. Quinn Grimes another three, and Kelvin has got a championship in his sights again. Thanks to Quentin Grimes and his five threes. Well, this is a terrific, and I, and I do believe, a uh, Final Four type team. It's really well coached. It plays hard. There won't be a team play harder than it. Skilled, as you've seen, by the barrage of threes that guys have knocked in. The effort in every one of these Cincinnati shots. Overwhelming. Grimes. Oh, that would have been a heat check of all heat checks. Rebound Adams Woods. You know, this half, about, I'm sorry, Dan, go ahead. No, no, but, uh, you know, Calvin Sampson, look, let's talk about his staff for a minute. Quantus White, Hollis Price, two terrific players that know Calvin's philosophy and culture, and then his son, Kellen, who I think is going to be one of the great coaches in college basketball coming up. I worked with Kellen and Travis Steele, the head coach at... Uh, Xavier when they were young coaches coming up video coordinators. I worked with them at Indiana and two of my favorite people in college basketball and Travis a terrific coach and Kelvin's gonna be absolutely the same when he gets his opportunity. It's a great staff here for Kelvin Sampson. Thomas Price, Quantus White, the whole Sampson family feeling pretty good right now. <laughs> Two games yet to go final here in Champ Week in Division I men's basketball. Quentin Grimes' day may have gone final. His Houston Cougars are up 25 on Cincinnati. Seven and a half minutes away from an American Tournament Championship. And Kelvin Sampson's got a full line chance here as Cameron Tyson off the bench strokes a three. It's 72 44. Three weeks, Dan. After it was Houston 90, Cincinnati 52. Houston gets going. They can really get going. I mean, people, people think they're a defensive team, which they are, okay? A hustle team, which they are. But you've seen today, they can get it and get it down the floor and knock it in. <laughs> when, when Sasser gets going, it. I felt like it gives everybody else confidence, Kevin. I, I, I feel like when he can get in the lane, everybody kind of feeds off that. Well, last eight games, Sasser's 21% from three. He's, he's been in a real funk in the second half of the season, Sasser. But Kelvin Sams has told us all year, you know, we have not been a first shot team. They're ninth in the country in adjusted offensive efficiency because they just crush you on the glass. But imagine if they can get to being a first shot team with their rebounding intensity, if they can shoot it the way they've shot it today, 10 for 20 from three, they will be as tough and out as just about anybody in the country. Well, you can say that about a lot of teams, but the difference with Calvin and his team is, even if they are a first shot team, they're gonna guard. Yep. And they're gonna play really hard. 
Yeah. Strokes another. He had 10 threes in a game earlier this year, and he's got two in quick succession, and that'll be called a two. Williams, again, Cincinnati is in hoist mode, eight for 27 from three. Tyson was going to load that one up, too. He was going to. Here we go. Mark White. Maybe White. Eighth game back from Baton ACL, and White steps in to score. These are valuable Good minutes player. for Houston. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I tell you what, they're valuable minutes for White. White played well in the first half, exploded to the rim early in the game. What a day, what a season, what a team. You're made to move. Accurate Joey Brackets was. Hey, while we're here in a 29-point game, just want to thank the coaches, the players, the sports information directors, the staff members as part of these schools and teams. This has been an unprecedented season for them as well. And the folks here in the American have been very generous with their access to us. Kelvin Sampson, John Brannon in this game in particular over Zoom calls. And the SIDs who are some of the hardest working people who get some of the least credit of anybody in the sport or in college athletics. There's Jeff Conrad who sent us game notes at 3.30 in the morning yeah. Yeah. so we could have everything updated. And Andre Fouché for Cincinnati has been covering the men's and the women's teams this year because so many of the sports information departments have had budget cutbacks. There's a lot of great ones in this league. Brian Holmgren at Wichita State who always manages to stick our names in the game notes uh michael schroeder got the job about a week before the season started at memphis there's andre for cincinnati just a lot of folks who have made our lives easier i mean the beat writers we can't be there at shoot around and we can't see these teams in person so we rely on local coverage so much folks like justin williams who covers cincinnati for the athletic daniel lerner at the daily memphian joseph duarte at the houston chronicle Taylor Eldridge, the Wichita Eagle. There are a lot of great ones in this league, could go on and on, but again, with us not being able to be at the games this year, uh, the work of all the men and women who've been able to be there, been able to cover the sports, been able to help us with what we need. Again, another round of truly appreciative thank yous to all of them. I'm with you on everything but the writers. <laughs> <laughs> They'll all be on your show tomorrow. All on the Dan Duncan show. Be three hours of beat writers. Nothing more. Nothing less. Yeah, they're pretty good guy. I don't know the guys in this league very well, but I know across the Big Ten and other places. They're good dudes. Fun guys to hang out with. I mean, this is it for us. We got the NIT coming up at uh, ESPN. Obviously, we're very excited about that. But this is our last game before the NIT of the thousands of games that we've been able to put on during a pandemic this season. And Kevin, I, I'm just telling you, I, I'm blown away. totally, I'm in, I, I am, I'm blown away that the programming, you mentioned it, David Seisler and Michael Schiffman and our bosses, Linda Schultz, you know, everything got done. It's unbelievable. But I got to tell you, the people that we call in transmission to get our game set up and just whoever sat in a room and thought of, okay, we're going to put these games on from individuals' houses and how they went about the business of doing that. Unbelievable. And thank all of you for doing that, for being so damn smart. Yes. Thank you, everyone. And thank you all for watching. We hope you've had as much fun as we have. We've got a little bit more left in this one. Some intrigue. They are not going to go back to back to back. The Houston Cougars will have their names and their photos added to that list. An absolutely dominant effort from start to finish. This is a different Cincinnati team than we saw three weeks ago. Houston beat them by 38. Cincinnati found themselves in that span. But it doesn't seem to matter today, Dan, because Houston has loaded up. And John Brannon's team deserves all the credit in the world for getting to this point. It's been an extraordinarily difficult season obviously for everyone but in particular for cincinnati you go back to a year ago john brannan at the end of last season 
lost his father with whom he was so terribly close and Cincinnati wins the championship they have the season canceled they lose Darren Cumberland and Trey Scott always going to be a transition year for Cincinnati started three and seven then they hit the COVID break and they've been great since coming back from 25 days off of the COVID shutdown the future is bright for this team I know three weeks ago Cincinnati fans were understandably upset after the loss to Houston saying what's going on with this team uh, they figured out a lot of things and I can't wait to see them next year yeah their freshmen have really played well in this and John Brandon I think has done as good a job as anybody in the country he's never he's not gonna get any accolades as a coach of the year and that's fine you know you got to win more than they did but just to have this team on the on the right side of the win-loss ledger is incredible based on five guys opting out oh looky here looky here Diara who's now wearing a backup jersey for some reason he switched to 22 with the finger roll he's got 10. Yeah, you know five guys opt out two come back John has weathered everything that you need to you kind of expect out of a year like this you know uncertainty but he had him playing great basketball towards the end wow Kyron Powell steps out and scores off the end of the Houston bench for the win <laughs> That's that's your one thirty-six point <laughs> opportunity. You only get one. All right, party on now for Houston. We're emptying the bench. Caleb Brood is going to come into the game. Ryan Elvin's going to come into the game, and the celebration is on in Houston, Texas. It's on in the Woodlands. It's on in Dickinson. It's on all over this great state where the Cougars are rolling into the NCAA tournament. Manson misses the three. Eason, another one of those great Cincinnati freshmen, tracks it down, and he is fouled by Powell. Not enough. You just, you know, Kelvin Sampson and Stab have recruited a team that, frankly, looks like Kelvin really enjoys coaching and by that I mean he's really comfortable getting after them I thought yesterday to start the game he was I'm going to say uptight but he was concerned so he really got after his guys and that as a coach frankly it, it makes you feel good that nobody's going to salt wine nobody's going to opt out in the middle of a game or anything like that that's how that's how you want to coach so you can straighten things out you know it's fascinating we get mad all the time about coaches being too tough on players but last i looked most of the guys that hold players accountable win a lot of ball games tice has got a hoist no oh wow offensive break out of power Well, that ends any intrigue. As the number was 135, number right down. there. <laughs> Tyron Powell adds to the joy of Houston fans and a host of others. Or maybe there's angst. David and Julius, I can't wait to see a full year of the Julius next year. You get him a full off season with Cincinnati. He was a good player. You saw him in Michigan a couple of years ago. He'll be a very interesting piece for the Bearcats, assuming he's back next year. You know, college basketball can be absolutely great next year. You think about it, everybody gets a free year, everybody can come back, now who knows who's gonna. Wow, another guy drilling it. How about this guy? Everybody, everybody make him. 6'10", freshman Powell. How many teams in the nation is he playing? Houston's just overstuffed with bigs, and he can't get on the court before garbage time, as Easton has fouled for Cincinnati. That's a really good point, and to your point about how deep this kid was player of the year in the conference preseason is here for since or for uh, Houston great point Caleb Mills yeah and Fabian White who looks to me like he is really good uh, only played in six games incredible job by Houston staff I'm glad you brought that up because I think we've all forgotten the name Caleb Mills he played four games he transferred he was a player of the year Houston hasn't missed a beat I want to remind you tonight NBA Flippers and the Pelicans. Zion Williamson's been awesome this year. He'll face Kawhi Leonard in LA. 
at 9 Eastern, 8 Central. ESPN, streaming live on the ESPN app. Your NBA Sunday presented by State Farm. Kawhi Leonard, or excuse me, Zion Williamson is one of the smartest basketball players at a young age I ever saw. Uh, he made the right... No! Oh! Kelvin calls him one of the best shooters on the team, and Ryan Elvin has just ended the American Tournament Championship with a swished triple. Since 1996, Cincinnati has lost five games by 30 points, Dan. Two in the last month to this Houston juggernaut. 37 is going to be the spread today. 91, 54. The Houston Cougars are finally champions of the American Conference Tournament. And Houston is walking on air into the NCAA Tournament next weekend. What an effort. For those of you that don't think players want to play, look at this celebration, man. Look at these guys. That's awesome.